Sup Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Reviews where today we have ourselves a track from an act named Land of Chocolate titled Your Finest Hour and if we switch over to here we have ourselves a track on YouTube, this is the official video for it, this is also uh, a track off of their most recent album titled Your Finest Hour which I think is going to be released on the 6th of October so it should be out at this point in time so you can go check out the rest of the album via the uh, the various links in this video and all that but we're gonna listen through this track from start to finish and we're gonna hear what we think let's go I mean, like, it's kind of proggy with the infusion of the various guitarist basses, organs, and drum parts. I like the intricacy of the performance. It was nice to have the double tracking of the vocals and the chorus as well to contrast nicely with the vocals in the center. It's always tough to see. I mean, it's just character like that, you know? I mean, it's such a wide variety, you know. I like the range that we have, the diversity within the chord progressions and bass lines. We are not hesitating to have extensions there as well, pauses where we're kind of like, are we really going to go to the next part? And then we switch there. It's constantly enigmatic. Some chromaticism here, it's kind of... And the way we raise in that falsetto like that is very elegant. Don't often get tempo switches in these songs. I kind of like that there's a little bit of um.
It's almost like we are realizing that we're doing something special, but then we're just being recognized or reminded, I suppose, of how, again, as I was saying, it's all been done before. Is it that our key is within ourselves, but even if we do the best we can, it's the same that already is it, that already exists? Is it like a parody of the concept of people, everyone being special and like having their own kind of uh, blessings and stuff like that, but really we aren't as special as we think they are? Kind of adore that audacity if that's the case. I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to think about it for a moment and then we're going to do the conclusion. And welcome to the conclusion of my review of this track from an act named Land of Chocolate, titled Your Finest Hour. Now, what do I think this track is about? I had a go at it at the end. After thinking on it, I, I believe it is a situation where we are looking at someone making the most of their life, trying to kind of take control of it, etc. You know, personal agency kind of thing. It, it's also, I think, commenting on even if we do unlock our potential and sort of take off the literature and stuff like that, it's about reflecting on the fact that we also aren't as special because a lot of it's already been done before and we really need to kind of remain humble, I suppose whilst we try and sort of find our place in the universe. If, if I'm not mistaken, that's kind of what I got from this track upon listening to it for the first time. There is a lot going on within this track, not just with the vocals, but with the rest of the instruments as well. And it's by no means a typical composition that I get through with a lot of these tracks where you have one sort of main musical concept and you're kind of playing around with that or kind of manipulating a little bit but never straying too far away with that. It is a journey from start to finish with constant movement and really elegant, sophisticated transfers. But before we get into all that composition stuff, um, we've got a situation, I think, with the vocal style where it works well here. There were some really sort of progressive tonalities here, some unconventional major and minor chord patterns here. We've got some chromaticisms in the mix. The musical accompaniment is incredibly complicated. And what I think we did so well here is finding a way, not only with our vocal melodies, but our harmonies to kind of get them together and behave. We're showing a fundamental understanding of music and composition here that is not as common as one would. And hope, especially for this kind of music where it's so liberal with its sort of tonal flexibility. And I think that in order to sort of jump around the different shapes and patterns you have here, you really need to know your sequences, establish, uh, you know, whole notes or chord note phrasings, you know, slow down a little bit with the way we kind of, because there's a lot of danger when you're writing vocal melodies or such busy stuff. And especially with parallel majors and minors, you have to kind of go down to those, you have to kind of go up for those to really kind of make them work. But we, we did that here. I think we had good vocal technique. We were comfortable in our head and chest voices. There were some nice legato passages in some of the interval parts, although I hesitate to say, what is an interlude, interval or interlude? What is a chorus necessarily? I mean, there, there was a chorus part that I could recognize, but there were lots of different sort of stanzas that intertwined and intermingled and went from one to the other. It was, it was charming, but it was also very busy. I think the personality within the track was one of wonderment, but it was also one of trying to like get the person to sort of like come back down to earth and experience the reality of the situation. You got the feeling that it was a very practical approach to whatever they were discussing philosophically, but that they still wanted to approach it from like a wider perspective and a more academic one. And I appreciate that. There was no filler within it. It was almost through composed. I mean, I know there were some there were some choruses that had lines uh, continued and, and, you know, repeated, but there was just so much crazy stuff going on with the different guitar, bass, drum, key parts, and I'm kind of blown away by how they managed to get it all to intertwine and intermingle. There were other dominant lead layers outside of the vocals, but if I was to try and find a way to really approach this, I think, first of all, we have to establish that this was never going to be something that was super duper easy listening, if that makes sense. You had almost all the elements off the bat with, the, again, the organs, the, the drums, the guitars, and the bass. And we had very, they were very, very energetic. Like the drum parts of lots of eighth and 16th and even some 32nd parts there. Lots of different tom fills and sort of offbeat sort of cymbal and snare focuses and stuff like that. It's very, very well played. Like there were lots of ghost notes and the drums were almost pocketing a little bit despite the complexity of it. Simply I think so they didn't kind of stab into the mix too much. I kind of appreciated how the drummer managed to play so much yet not be the focal point the entire time because they knew to kind of 
allow room for the bass and the drums with the perceived loudness. I think the bass guitar that we had there was an absolute marvel to kind of roll, not only keep in sync with what the drums were doing, but to be able to also have the sense of unity with what was Kevin coloration wise with all the crazy guitar and, and key bits with the organs. I think that the bass relative to those pocketed, but in a way where it didn't diminish the experience that was still at the same level but you know, it just had it's had its place and its niche and it stuck within it and was very respectful of that. With a composition like this, the guitar and organs were kind of on par with each other. You had these really interesting, I want to say bohemian, I'm not sure why. There, there was interesting Moorish kind of lead parts that explored not only major or minor scales, but the various modes. There was some jazzy infusions and there's some experimental stuff. Uh, we we didn't just stick with the traditional natural scape, shapes. We, we also worked some pentatonics and other chromatics and such. We had, again, with the parallel majors and minors, it was some of the most fascinating stuff I've listened to purely from the variety of different interval choices we had in there. But also from the fact that whenever we did go for the lead to sort of either coalesce with the vocals or replace it entirely, it still never felt like too much. It was weird that we managed to sum, I think it's because of how the vocals drove it forward with the drums and the accents, but the guitars almost soared, not in a way which was kind of competing with the keys. But when there was, when things kind of separated and they went their own separate ways and they were in the ether and they were kind of buzzing and kind of like flicking around, there were moments where they all came together and it was incredibly powerful. I think that constant pushing and pulling is part of what made that track work compositionally and performatively. The organs gave me a kind of a dream theater vibe and I know that organs have been used in other bands and dream theater but i think like this is it adds a sense of drama and tension to it that makes it sort of a bigger experience than if i think if it had without it i think the song is phenomenal because it has that extra bit of brightness in the mid to high range with the keys uh working with the several uh important points of the triad not necessarily the root but like the thirds or fifths or whatever or like kind of doing some modes where they move everything up and kind of goes with it it's just you're definitely not having a typical listening experience here. We had lots of different chord progressions and various shapes here. We had changes in the intensity. There was dynamic range to the performance as well as in the studio production. And we uh, explored our instruments very well. And it was just a tight performance with the chemistry and everything like that as well. It was almost overwhelming to an extent with the amount of everything going on. But I think that if we'd done any less, we might have missed important context within the story. Because again, there was no filler. There was no over-repeating of stuff like that. They didn't sort of cheap out on any of the key ingredients. The studio recording, mixing and mastering. I'm, I'm mostly happy with it. I think that it sounded great. I was initially unsure of whether the center vocals were loud enough in the mix, but then the side vocals came in when they were double tracked and they had great presence. So I think it was just maybe uh, it could be these headphones, uh, but I could hear a lot of the center vocal parts still. And uh, maybe it's just simply because of the amount of stuff going around with like the guitars, keys, organs, or should I say, the drums and the bass. Though I will say that the drums, you know, those backing accompaniment instruments, they were very well niched in the stereo frequency spectrum and they were nice and wide in the stereo field like they were all around the place like you were surrounded by the music and there was dynamic range to it with nice leveling and padding there things weren't suffocated or choked and again it was multi-dimensional you had some ghost notes with the drum kit for example which kind of sucked under the bass and guitar parts and everything like that and it was incredibly satisfying because it's just i think if you had not had enough dynamic range it would have been too ferocious but yeah, the vocals were nicely filtered and EQ'd in the mix, and I liked how they alternated between the center and the sides. There was a nice exploration there, but it was also nice and loud without pumping, so the bus compression limiting we handled. I mean, this is a track from, you know, Land of Chocolate, titled Your Finest Hour. This is stuff I'm going to be thinking about for a while, because it's uh, definitely not your typical first impression single where they're kind of finding their footing. This is an act like I think their last album, if I'm not mistaken, was released 19 years ago. So their level of expertise and polish is here is not unexpected, but it is nonetheless appreciated. I'm grateful for the fact that this is just a really mature, interesting, intriguing composition that shows their strengths. And this is effectively my review of this track from an act named Land of Chocolate titled Your Finest Hour off of the album with the same name and hopefully enjoyed it. If you did, please go show them some love via their various social medias and YouTube page and stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as you need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and I'll catch you in the next review. 
spot a hands out.